looking to improve your life, brush up on your personal growth techniques, you are in the right place. Welcome to Life's Little Lessons with your host, author of Designing Your Own Destiny, Kevin A. Dunlap. Hello, everybody. This is Kevin Dunlap with Life's Little Lessons for, and with the company Plentiful Perspectives. And today I have a special guest. This is a person that I've met a few times in a mastermind training that I go to here in Las Vegas, Nevada. And after having a few conversations with her, I just had to have her on our show. Her name is Robin Eckersley. She is an impact coach, has been doing this for over two years in here in Las Vegas, Nevada. The name of her company is called Robin Eckersley Coaching. And she's been, her main focus is actually helping women and small business owners. So welcome to the show, Robin. And I'm glad you're here with us today. Kevin, thank you so much. I'm thrilled to be on this show and I look forward to our conversation today. Well, same here, same here. So Robin, tell us a little bit about yourself. What is it that you really do and why is it that you do it? So what I do is a variety of things. Um, typically, I help uh, women who happen to be small business owners, and I help them understand the bigger picture in life. So a lot of times with especially small business owners, we have this understanding of a why, a reason, a motivation for doing what we do and why we put our blood, sweat, and tears into these operations. Um, and we have, we're encouraged in um, early mentorships, in early um, trainings and whatnot to find that why for your business. But the rest of us and the rest of their lives don't necessarily have an articulated why or reason driving their decisions in the rest of their lives. So I help them with that big picture why. What is the why for your life, not just for your business? And that's really our starting point of where we go forward. So now that we understand what we're do why we're doing what we're doing, how does that shape our decisions both personally and professionally? So that um, works with a lot of understanding ourselves at a deeper level. It understands what we want our, we, we work to understand what we want our lives to be about. So it's a lot of legacy work as well. Um, so generally, um, it's at a big scale, it's coaching around life purpose and legacy. And that comes in the format for me through workshops, through webinars, through group coaching and one-on-one -on -one coaching primarily. Okay, fantastic. So it sounds like you're trying to bring more of a balance in their life, or are you just trying to bring their personal lives up to the level of their, of their professional life? Um, well, actually, it's more fulfillment. If I were to say, say one word, it would be more fulfillment in all aspects of their life. Because when we're, when we're going through the motions, when we're putting the time into the work, when we're putting our time into all of these errands and our to-do lists on a day-to-day -day basis, we get stuck in the wheel of action, the wheel of to-dos, <laughs> instead of why we got onto that wheel in the first place. And um, I work with them to create more fulfilling decisions um, so that, you know, whether that means changing their personal lives or changing how they run their business or even, you know, if they want to be in that business in the first place, um, they're more secure and fulfilled in the path moving forward. So it's really taking a look at Am I just in this because it sounded like a good idea? Am I in this business because I can monetize it? Am I doing these things in my personal life just because it's habit and what it's what I've been imitating through other examples in my life growing up? Um, or is this truly a way that I can live in a fulfilled manner? Um, so it's more of filling in that skeleton that we've created of our lives through uh, purpose and through intention. Okay. Now, have you come across, because you, you're talking about they may be in, in businesses that they thought would be a good idea, but maybe it's not a good idea anymore. Have you helped people actually change their focus or even change their whole business or even change businesses entirely? Well, that ended up happening actually with one of my most recent clients, although that wasn't the, that wasn't the intention from the beginning of our relationship. It just kind of happened naturally after we worked together. Um, there's one woman who is in, who was in the health and skincare uh, profession, and she was loving it. That was her full-time profession. She was just, you know, hammering away at the business every single day. But her true passion was fighting human trafficking. And that was kind of, as with most <laughs> large global challenges, for most of us, 
working towards those global challenges and supporting large causes like that tends to take a back tends to take um, the back burner because we have you know we got to make a living we have to have the paycheck we got to you know get the kids to school and we have our our more immediate tasks and needs and demands in our lives and so that tends to take the forefront but through our work together we ended up seeing that hey maybe this is actually taking away from the work that she could be doing more directly supporting human trafficking. So I just checked in with her actually a couple of, I guess, three weeks ago now. And um, it turns out she's no longer in, in the skincare business. And <clears throat> excuse me, she decided to, to go a completely different route with bringing public awareness to human trafficking now. So she's got a couple of different projects that she's partnered with other people on that have nothing to do with health and wellness and skincare, <laughs> um, but they are more directly directed to this global cause. Okay, and was she able to monetize something like that? Um, yes, she is. She's partnered. Um, I forget the organization, um, but it's a full-time partnership. She has a chief executive role in that position, and um, that is now her new profession. <laughs> well, fantastic. So you helped yeah. somebody find some focus and clarity in what they were doing, and that you were able to help them get from something that were interested in but they weren't passionate about and to follow into something that they were a lot more passionate about yes yes and it's so common it's so common um in terms of taking that passion and not really seeing a clear way to monetize it or to make a living a viable living off of it and so we put that passion into either a non-existent role in our lives or a that would be nice when I have time or that would be nice when I have additional money and we kind of set aside those passions, but she was able to, to get creative and kind of open the box to see how she could bring that back into the forefront. And it was beautiful to see. <laughs> and just imagine just by you helping her do that, uh, just for, you know, what other, other people's lives that will be affected by that as well, by, by just her directly making that one decision change. Yes, yes. And I mean, just immediately, the first thing that comes to my mind is um, she has an adopted daughter who, she, who is also her world. And her, one of her biggest priorities when she came to me was saying, I want to be in a role model for my daughter. And um, already her young daughter, I think she's, I think she's six or seven, um, is seeing that her mom can have a viable career while helping other victims or helping victims halfway across the world. Um, and actually here in Las Vegas, it is the human trafficking capital of the country, unfortunately, and her work, I'm sure, will have ripples here as well locally. Okay. And so you've been doing this for two years now. Uh, how did you get started in a business like what you're doing now? And what was your reason for getting started in this business? Well, let's see. In a former life, pre-coach, <laughs> pre-coach life. I was a project manager um, and I come from the tech sector. So I'm originally from Maryland on the other side of the country and I worked for a government and military contractor there who um, did awesome tech work um, in terms of geospatial mapping and mobile app development and um, fascinating stuff, fascinating technology. And I first got into it because um, the company at the time was using that technology for humanitarian purposes. So disaster relief recovery primarily. Um, and so I was all on board with that. I wanted my career and my life to be about something that mattered and that helped people. And this was a great opportunity for that time in my life. And um, the thing is that that was, that was where I like cut my teeth on project management, I think. And I ended up doing a really good job. And it could definitely have been a viable career path for me long term. I could have retired from that arena. Um, but there was a, <laughs> it wasn't a great fit, I guess, culturally for me. Um, it was, I found it to be a more of a good old boy club and being the youngest project manager and the only female project manager in um, an ex-military primarily environment was, was difficult to be taken seriously. And it was difficult to, um, feel like I could progress my career in the way that I wanted to. Um, so my now husband and I, we ended up, we met at that job. Um, we decided, you know what, let's leave the DC area. Let's go see what's in California. Let's, let's start over essentially. And that was, um, one of the times I've had a really big reinvention of myself. 
Um, so we trekked across the country and landed in San Francisco. No job, no apartment, no plans of anything, just completely trusting that we will figure it out. Um, now, <laughs> with hindsight, you know, I, I, I see why friends and family had that fear for us saying, you know, what are you going to do? San Francisco is so expensive and you don't have anywhere lined up. What are you doing? Um, but we both ended up with really solid jobs. I had a job in Silicon Valley and my husband had a job with a startup and um, I was doing project management with more event management, um, kind of like an event management slant to it. Um, but again, you end up working, working and working and working and it was, um, it wasn't fulfilling. It didn't, I bought into a mission at the beginning and then kind of realized that it's, that the mission was kind of, as with many organizations and many businesses, it's kind of a shell that makes the business look great and it's great for marketing and it's great for, for, you know, garnering team spirit. But at the end of the day, it's still about profits. It's still about what do other people think about us? instead of how can we help other people. And um, at the, the government, um, the government con contracting job, while I was there, I was there for about three years, um, they shifted focus from humanitarian efforts to more active military efforts. And personally, I, I couldn't get behind it. So my, my soul ended up kind of retreating from the purpose, um, much like this Silicon Valley thing. So I get really bought into this big idea of changing the world and helping people. And then, you know, once I guess, quote, reality sets in um, and you see why things are happening the way they are, then I start to feel, I, I start to felt, I had started to feel that I was no longer working towards a larger purpose or mission. Mm -hmm. And that emptiness uh, coupled with really long days, really long weeks, um, no fulfillment at all. It really started to take a toll and at that point, we had been, we relocated to Las Vegas um, because my husband got an amazing job in Silicon Valley. It's Silicon Valley. He, my husband got an amazing job here with Zappos. And um, that's when I decided, hey, you know what? It's time to make my life fulfilling. It's time to do something more because I know I can. But what was getting in my way was I didn't know what that looked like. I didn't know how that happened because when I was growing up, the way you make a difference is either you're a full-time volunteer or you're a doctor or a lawyer or some kind of um, long-term, many, many years of schooling and many, many years of, of uh, investments to, to get yourself into this profession of prestige and impact. And um, I, that was not a route for me and not a route that I wanted to take. So when I decided that, hey, I gotta figure this out, that's when I serendipitously came across my first life coach and mm -hmm. I had never heard of coaching or this, whether it's industry that we had a session together and it was kind of funny because I was telling her about this crossroads that I was at with what I wanted to do with my life and, and make a difference in the world. And <laughs> through, through our conversation, she said, you know, it kind of sounds like you want to do what I do. And I kind of laughed and I was like, I'm sorry, I, I still don't know what you do. I don't get what we're doing here. <laughs> and she, she laughed and she was like, do some research. Let me know what you think. And um, so I did. I dug in and I did my due diligence. And uh, it was like a giant light bulb went off. I was saying, this is exactly what I'm suited for. I could really make an impact this way. Um, and another thing about me is that I'm um, a domestic violence survivor. And at that point in my life, I was thinking, how can I help women who are currently in or getting out of or recently gotten out of domestic violence situations? Because I was able to do it. And I, I know that's not very common. Um, and that it's, it can be a devastating, you know, the converse can be devastating. So I was wanting to show other women that it is possible to reinvent yourself, to recreate a new life, even when it seems so far away and you're just looking to survive day to day. Um, and so I thought, hey, with, with coaching training and with these folks that I wanna help, maybe I have a business idea here. Maybe this is something that I could move forward and, and put you know, my life, um, dedicate my life to. So, uh, when I first started my coaching business, I, I came out as a self-care coach. 
And I thought that was going to be exactly what I wanted to do. And I'm going to work with um, domestic violence uh, victims. And it was very clear in the beginning, I was all fired up. But through a, a series of, of, of more, you know, personal development is a journey. Um, and I decided that, you know what, at this point in my life, I think I'm better suited to work with women who are, who are on their feet and on their way to making an impact, but aren't necessarily sure how or what that looks like. And maybe they're getting in their own way with their own fears and insecurities and whatnot. Um, and that I can be of service to them to help them make an impact. Okay. So yeah. were you, did you go through a certification or, or did you, was most of yourself self-taught? Yeah, I went to, well, I, I, I feel like the school of life is, is my, is my primary education, but mm -hmm. in terms of my coaching certification, I went to a, a training program called IPEC, the Institute IPEC. for Professional Excellence in Coaching. Um, and I did their training and I got my uh, certified coaching professional certification as well as a master, a master practitioner um, accreditation for the Energy Leadership Index assessment. So um, that's an assessment where you can administer uh, where you're certified to administer this to uh, people who are interested in understanding how they're seeing the world. How is their perspective and attitudes, how are they shaping their decisions and how they show up in the world? Um, so it's much like, you know, a Myers-Briggs, except it's not, um, it's not personality, it's actually attitude. So your results for this assessment can change depending on where you are in your life. Um, so yeah, those, are, those were the two certifications I ended up getting. And for those of you that are not familiar with Myers-Briggs, that's a personality uh, uh, testing. I believe there's 16 results that you can get out of it. There's a, I think so, yes. There's, there's two times two times two times two. There's, there's four different mm -hmm. criteria, and there's two choices between those criteria. And those of you that are interested in learning more about Myers-Briggs and personality testing, there are plenty of books out there. Um, there's a book I have here, right here on my, on my shelf uh, here that goes into it. It's called the, this this. The art of, uh, I think it's called the art of speed reading people, mm. and it's uh, and it goes mm -hmm. re really into depth into the Myers Briggs, and there's other kinds of personality things like the DISC formula. There's also uh, yes. if you go through uh, personal growth company like PSI seminars. They have what they call the behavioral matrix, I and mean, there's all different kinds of things out there. But mm -hmm. yes, um, but there is, but you went to a lot more depth in detail than than just that. Now, would you suggest, because I've heard of IPEC from a few of the other coaches that mm. have been on our show, uh, would you suggest that people take something, some kind of formalized uh, coaching certification program if they were willing to become a coach? Or would you suggest that, hey, you know, you do learn a lot from the School of Hard Knocks, that, you know, you, you just, you can actually build your coaching business just off of your own life experiences. Mm. What, what is your suggestion? In, That's in that an excellent question, actually. Um, I think it depends on what you're looking to do with how you help people. Because um, to me, a coach is someone that helps other people uh, make their own decisions and get to the place that they want to be. Um, a lot of times people have this idea that a coach is more of a consultant or a mentor where you're more telling people they should do this or this would be great, this would be better if they did this and it's more suggestion, it's more direction. Uh, whereas coaching is more facilitation, I think, like facilitation with oneself. Um, and for me, I, know for a fact that I'm much better equipped because of my training to be a true, to play a true coach role. Um, there are some times when there are, you know, if someone is looking for uh, particular resources or supports or um, uh, hasn't had the experience uh, where I might step in and suggest, hey, you might read this book or um, if they're asking for my personal experience, um, specifically, then I can share that with them. But it is important to realize that every single person is completely unique, not just because of their makeup, but because of uh, the path that they've walked. You know, my experience as a domestic violence survivor is not going to be identical to another survivor's experience, right? Um, so the way that I got out of that might necessarily be actually a very bad idea for someone else who is in a similar situation. So even if we are situationally in similar places, what we do strategy wise and what kind of goals we set and, and how, we, how we look to move ourselves into a place of change could and probably will be very different. 
Um, and so there's, you know, with life, there's no one size fits all situation. There's no, um, you know, one solution to every challenge, even though it might look the same on paper. So for those, pur for those purposes, if you're looking to truly help people find fulfilling decisions and not simply just instruct people what to do or give them advice on what to do, I would absolutely suggest going to a coaching training program. Um, IPAC, of course, I'm going to recommend that because that's the one that is near and dear to my heart, but there's also other institutions like I think CTI and, and a bunch of others out there too. Yes, I, there's quite a few of them out there. Even yeah. going to say Tony Robbins or going to yeah. uh, so many mm -hmm. other ones. There's also NLP certifications. I know I, I have my practitioner certification in NLP through, not through Tad James, but through Dr. Matt James, which is Tad oh. James' son. Oh. Um, <laughs> so there's uh, there's all kinds of different kinds of certifications that get you the knowledge of, uh, of you know, of, of, of doing this. But getting your coaching certification, I, I think, is a, it is a, it's not necessarily required, but it's, it's very helpful uh, to have. <gasps> Yes, exactly. It's, it's, it's another tool and tool belt, honestly. That's what I would say. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because a lot of our listeners out here are, are entrepreneurs. I know you, you start, you deal with women that are starting their own businesses or help them scale mm -hmm. their businesses, kind of like what I do as well. Mm -hmm. uh, however, um, the, you know, coaching is, it could be one of the easy, in my opinion, one of the easiest businesses to get started because it's not brick and mortar. I mean, it's mm. all you need is a telephone, maybe a computer and your life experiences. And then having, you know, being able to share that and actually be the, the shoulder for other people to, to I don't want to say to cry on, but, you know, for, you know, sometimes people, all people need is just to be listened to. Yes. So yeah. coaching is one of the easier in my opinion, businesses to get started. Now, of course, you know, we're, you know, we're not saying that you should start a coaching business. You're saying that that's often, that's one of the easiest ways to get started. Now, sure. yeah. uh, before we get really into the meat of this, tell me a little bit about why did you change from the domestic violence uh, or through your self care coaching that you got your coaching through to actually doing women entrepreneurs or just entrepreneurs in general? Why did you make that shift? Um, well, also something to note is that I don't think I'll be staying here forever, that this is not um, the, the, my target client for the rest of my working life. Um, I am embedded in a community here in Las Vegas of small business owners, and it is, it is my world at this point. Um, and I find that I am connecting very well with these women and um, that they are that, that something about me and what I do and how I, how I speak about what I do and how I do what I do is resonating with this particular group of women. Um, also from a place of, um, ironically, from a place of self-care, um, I decided that being a self-care coach was actually ended up being more draining to me because it would um, these are, these are very serious situations. These are very, um, you know, heavy energy situations of feeling like you have no agency in your life of feeling like there is no light at the end of the tunnel. And that when I am left from a session depleted, I am not there. I'm not able to be fully present and fully a support system to the next client. Um, and that's not fair to my clients. And so what I'm currently actually in the process of doing is that while I'm helping women who are in a place of, um, of building something and creating a business and growing and on this kind of like upward mobility already, um, I am taking time to um, something that's going to be happening in 2018, going to be donating my time on a small scale to women who are in those situations currently. So they won't be my main bread and butter, so to speak, for my business, but women who are maybe experiencing very tough circumstances and they need some support, they need some guidance, um, I will be offering my services on a, on a small volunteer basis. Um, but primarily, um, I'm looking to empower those folks who are on their way to making changes currently. So it's kind of helping them with their momentum in creating change in the world. Um, and as that kind of continues and continues, I'll be able to support more of the women who are more of this, what I like to call level one energy and what's, what's in this energy leadership program that I was trained in. Um, it's more level one, more of feeling like the world is 
what, what can I do in this world? Everything just kind of happens to me. I have no power here. So in that kind of sticky, lethargic, um, challenging energy of, of not feeling like you can move out of your circumstances, um, what I'm doing now will enable me to be there more fully for those women in the future. Fantastic. And I was going to ask you that uh, early on when you were uh, discussing about doing the uh, the self-care coaching, because I've, mm. I've sp spoken to a couple other coaches before that were in a similar industry, not necessarily domestic violence, but no, they were reliving a very mm. negative aspect of their lives. And it was constantly reliving that. And that was just so disempowering uh, to the coach. I mean, granted, they're, it's great for the client, but if the coach cannot re regenerate themselves or re-energize themselves, then they're actually not doing really any good at yes. all. Yes. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of at that point, you, you are, you are disempowering yourself. Um, if you have too many clients that will that will trigger stuff within you and mm -hmm. as your responsibility as a coach if you have something that's going to be triggered within you it's more important to get that client with someone who doesn't have that trigger because and this is the difference between a coach and maybe a mentor um, or if you're thinking about becoming um, a business owner or a, a servant in some way to people who are experiencing what you've experienced um, it is important to realize that you don't have to have walked in someone else's shoes to have to help them. You don't have had to have their experiences to be someone that can support them in a, in a different role. Um, and a lot of times we think, especially as coaches, oh, I haven't, um, you know, I haven't become the next Tony Robbins. What can I tell people about building a business? And that's when you remind yourself, like, hey, you're not telling them how to do it. You're helping them find their own way to do it. Um, exactly. And that's the one thing I've, I, I often point out. And I usually like to use something that is visual so that people can understand this. So I, I'll go into, in this case, sports. Mm -hmm. So let's say a basketball coach or the head football coach you know, on a professional NFL team or a golfing coach. Most of those people have never played the game. <laughs> I mean, and That's true, like, yeah. <laughs> so, because they're a coach, they're not the mentor. They're not the yes. ones that have been there and done it themselves. Sometimes they are. I mean, mm -hmm. sometimes, you know, retired quarterbacks will become a coach of some sort. Mm -hmm. However, um, but they're usually, they've never really played the game. They, but they understand the mentality of how to draw something out of that player, how to draw something yes. out of that client, you know. Yeah. And so a player is the same as a client. I mean, they're just different analogies here. So, yes. That's the, very true. And I like and, that. Well, sorry, ironically, I, I was, um, volleyball used to be my life and I played it very competitively when I was younger. And then I was asked to be a coach and I found that transition from being in the game and playing and knowing my position and knowing our plays to becoming the strategist and looking at it from a different perspective, that transition was very difficult for me. So it was, you know, it's, it's two different realities. You don't have to have the exact experience to be Mm -hmm. some someone that someone else can learn from so i'm glad we're spending a, bit, a little bit of time in this because if you're thinking about becoming a coach just like what robin has said earlier you know, it could be an impact coach it could be a success coach it could be whatever kind of a coach it is whatever your passion is doesn't mean that you have it in, uh, in your life at that point in time Mm -hmm. I mean, you, yes. you're working toward it possibly but that's just where your passion is it's like you're is you're helping the women uh, entrepreneurs and you had to start at some point in time so let's let's actually go down that road a little bit when you were first getting started tell me about some of your early successes what were some of your early successes that you had while starting off as a coach um the very first one that pops into my mind was my very first client um i was battling those, you know, new entrepreneur feelings of, oh, is anyone even going to come to me? I'm so new and what, you know, they're going to see right through me, all of these kind of imposter syndrome type of mm -hmm. fears and your inner critic kind of coming front and center and taking over your life. Um, I, I was very, I was very proud of myself because I was very upfront um, with a community that I was very familiar with. So friends and family that knew I was switching years from my old profession of project management into uh, coaching and that this was fairly recent. And uh, I was very upfront. I'm saying, hey, you know, I have learned all of this amazing stuff and I'm very passionate about it. And I'm convinced that this can be a very um, powerful way for me to um, create change in the world. 
and I'm looking to take on my first couple of clients. And I was very upfront about that. I had no, you know, I, I was not okay with fee- with trying to portray this idea that I'm super successful and I already have this massive business and I had all these clients already. Um, because I'm like, you know what? Everyone has to start from somewhere. And if I'm not being authentic, then I can't feel good showing up for my clients knowing that I signed them up under false, in my mind, false pretenses. And so um, when I had my very first client, we did... Uh, just, I think it was four or six weeks, very short relationship um, for um, helping her figure out what she wants to do with her career. Cause she was looking to switch gears and she wasn't sure if she wanted to stick to what she knows or, and what her resume says she knows, um, or if she wanted to go a, t- a different route in her true passion, which was uh, hosting and cooking and the culinary arts. Um, so, and the other side was more HR focused. So we did some work around that. And um, for her, the process was, was, was much more, was, was longer. You know, she didn't switch gears or even make a decision after our relationship. And I was okay with that. You know, part of me was like, oh, she should have like found her passion and created this massive culinary arts empire by now. And that was, you know, <laughs> pressure that I put on myself. Um, but later we had a talk and she said, you know, our conversations were, were pivotal to, to my development and my journey. And I am, she's still, she's found a company now that is still in HR, but she has more confidence in how she can bring the culinary side of life into her everyday life. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a career choice, but as long as you're finding fulfillment and it, and putting it where you are comfortable with it. You don't necessarily have to, I feel like people might be intimidated by hiring a coach because they're like, oh my God, I'm going to have to turn my life upside down. And I'm scared of being a completely different person. And um, as coaches, we talk about transformation and we talk about these massive, you know, you can have whatever dreams you want, which is true. But the thing is, it's, it's perhaps not everyone is comfortable with getting their dreams all at once. So there's a time and a place um, where things kind of come into your life, I believe, as, as the season, um, as, as it is appropriate for the season. So whether it's relationships, whether it's career choices, whether it's whatever decisions you're making, um, just because you're not making this massive transformation overnight right now doesn't mean that that's not going to happen in the future. Like, who knows? Maybe she'll be a five-star chef working at the Four Seasons, um, you know, five years from now. You never know. But um, it, that was one of my biggest accomplishments or my most proudest moments, I should say, um, taking on my first client. Um, well, and well, well, then let me ask you this. Um, as people are getting started, and, and again, I'm just going to go down the coaching route because that's what both of, both sure. of us are doing. Yeah. Um, when you were taking on that first client, um, I, 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 I get this so much with coaches that people don't value themselves enough. They don't value what they can offer enough. Yes. Um, it's, uh, one of my earlier uh, interviews, I think the, she actually gave her four, first four um, clients basically free uh, free client, you know, free, you know, free consultation, and yeah. basically only asking for testimonials. That's, that, that, yeah. was her, that was her feedback. Now, did you do something like that, or would you recommend doing something like that? Um, I would recommend. It, so again, I think it depends on the person. But um, for example, for my mentee currently, I am recommending that for her um, simply because um, she has been developing her relationship with her inner critic and, um, where she at, where she is right now, she has a full-time job. So the income is not, um, is not a priority at this point. It's more of like a would be nice for supplemental income as she transitions from this job into a full-time coach. Um, so the pressures and the situation that she's in now, simply, it just makes more sense for her to say, Hey, can I coach you guys? let me know what you think. I want to practice. I want to, you know, just get the experience and build my confidence. And for her, the priority was the confidence and experience. So it wasn't necessarily the income. Um, You do, I do see that very often with new coaches specifically saying, I just want to coach. I don't care if you don't pay me because they're still developing their own money mindset and what Mm -hmm. they are valuing themselves at. Um, there's a lot of, um, <laughs> the coaching industry can be very expensive for clients. I'll just 
say that mm -hmm. out there. Um, you know, it's typically thousands of dollars for a six month package and that is the industry standard. Um, and if you are worried about people, about finding people who have thousands of dollars to invest in you, it depends on how you react about that. You know, are you concerned? Are you assuming that they don't have the money? Are you assuming they won't see your value because you aren't valuing yourself either? Um, there's a lot of different factors that come into play. Um, I would say as part of gaining your confidence, charging for your services is part of that because it's training yourself and it's training your clients to give and receive money as a way of exchanging value. Um, you're getting used to getting paid and you're training your clients to pay for valuable services. Um, and as you start to get your experience and as you start to see the feedback that your clients give you and see the changes that come into your clients' lives, it'll reinforce that idea of, hey, what I am doing is it does matter and it is valuable for people. And I, I, and I will fully agree with that because once you start valuing yourself, then you sh in my opinion, you should not prejudge how much somebody else is willing to pay. Yes. Um, as, as an example, I have a friend of mine, she was on an earlier podcast as well. And I don't know if we talked about it on that show or not, but I, but I know we talked about it offline, you know, in person. Mm -hmm. And she at one time, she was on a, I think let's say it was on a Friday and she came up to somebody and say, okay, I, uh, this is what my, my coaching, co my coaching, for you is going to cost and the person looked at her and says you're too cheap you you, you have no value to me she's like <laughs> like okay um or no, no excuse me you're too expensive you know i, I can't you know, uh, i can't yeah. pay for something like that yep mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, the the following monday she went up to another client and she actually raised her prices to what it was what the person said was too expensive and the guy looked at her and says no you're too cheap he says i cannot get any value from you <laughs> Speak up, so you cannot prejudge your clients. I, I would assume you just set your your prices, yeah. and then mm -hmm. you know, and periodically raise them. Now you will get both extremes, like in this woman's case. Mm -hmm. um, for an example, I mean, if I were to come to you, Robin, as okay, I want to hire you as my coach, and you say, "Well, I charge fifty cents an hour," mm -hmm. I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna look at that and says, and you and you're probably saying, "Oh my gosh, this person's going to pay me. They won't pay me a dollar an hour because right. they know what value do I have." But I will mm -hmm. look at you and says, "What value do you give at such a low price?" Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Am I gonna get anything out of this? Gonna get it. It's gonna be a waste of my time. Which mm -hmm. is the whole, you know, the whole concept of, you know, if you're just starting out, maybe you do some free consultations. If you know, do, do some free coaching sessions. However, you need to get away from that paradigm as quickly as possible. Because, yeah. because number one, you're not going to survive on nothing, no income. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, I know you get some experiences, you get some whatever, but you're not going to survive on that for uh, very long, uh, unless you yeah. have another source of income or a husband or a wife that's, you know, supporting you while you're uh, building this. Right. So, yes, the, you know, charge a, an appropriate amount, you know, wherever the, you can find is the industry standard. And mm -hmm. another uh, lady that I've trained with, her name is Lisa Sasevich, and I remember I one of the things, and I know I've said this on a previous show, is uh, she said once, once she says once five people are willing to pay your prices, it is time to raise your prices. <laughs> I like that. I've never heard that before. <laughs> so it's like okay, let's say you charge seven ninety five, seven hundred ninety five dollars for six sessions. Well, uh -huh. then this may you know you got five people that are quickly up signing up for that's like okay, I'll be too cheap here. I, I got to raise it to eight forty five now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, and the market like that. Oh, I like that. I'm going to try that. Because <laughs> it's one thing to, you know, it's, it's not just, and, and I want to make sure that the, the folks listening and watching also understand this. This isn't just, let me see how high I can go with the prices no. and let me just see how much people will pay. It's also, um, if you're truly in it for the clients, then you're also delivering additional value. The right. more experience you're getting, the more creative ways you're coming up with ways to support your clients. Because um, often coaching packages involve more than your coaching session, than maybe if it's a one-on-one -on -one phone call or video chat or in person, whatever. Um, oftentimes I will do things like offer uh, books or Kindle um, electronic versions of books to people. I'll just send them to them. Um, or I'll be sending them, you know, in the future I have plans for custom uh, goal setting journals and whatnot. So uh, those higher prices allow me to 
either purchase or create or provide more uh, tools of value to the clients too. It's not just, okay, now my hour is $200 an hour and I just feel like raising it to 250 an hour. Because a lot of times I think um, with intangible services or uh, more service-based products that um, there's, there's a tendency to say, you know, why, you know, that's, that's not fair. I was paying this, but you're now charging me this. Um, at the end of the day, you, we are finding ways to provide more value for our clients at the same time. And I would agree with you because once you, once you get started in this business, there's so many ways that you can offer free value. Like for me, as an example, offering this podcast, this is a free podcast for people that are wanting to listen in. Um, I've also done previous webinars and I can send them links to YouTube channels where uh, you know, they could actually uh, re-listen to a webinar from some time in the past. Mm-hmm. And oftentimes when I do a webinar, I'll create a free, I'll create an ebook that will be a complement to, to that program. So for an example, if Robin was thinking about being becoming a client of mine says, well, let's do our free consultation and let me give you these two or three free items of value. Mm -hmm. So basically what what is in our industry calling is called over delivering. Now you always say, this is what I promise you, but you always give more than what you promise. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Because this is, you know, not just, this is all you're going to get from me. It's not that we're looking to withhold support and tools from our clients. This is about what is appropriate because Mm -hmm. It's, it's also how can we be more um, available and supportive to our clients if we're, if we're constantly giving and constantly giving and just depleting ourselves. And if we're on the, our end worrying about, I can't pay bills this month, mentally you're not present for, you, you might not be present for your clients. This is about making sure that this whole idea of self-care and self-empowerment is taken in so that you can be an amazing resource for your clients. Um, and the more you, the more we live by the mantra, I, I imagine this is, this resonates with you too, Kevin, is that um, I try to live by the mantra, the more I get, the more I can give. So whether that looks like providing more resources for my clients, or this is, you know, donating time or finances to a cause that I believe in, um, the more that we have in our lives, and it doesn't have to be money, it could be also the time, it could be other, other resources, the more of an impact that we can make in this world on a larger scale. Mm -hmm. So if we're, if we're there kind of always depleting ourselves, we're not leaving much for the rest, you know? Well, that's, that's been said and I've heard for years. This is the more, the more people you can help, the more, the more successful you're overall going to be. Mm -hmm. Um, Because if I'm helping everybody, you know, helping these, these people achieve their successes, then that's just, you know, just the whole nature of karma uh, mm-hmm. is, is just going to return it. So that, yeah. I'm glad you shared that. Sure, sure. Now, now it's funny that we're actually going down this route because I have my I have my high ticket prices and I have my high ticket coaching packages. But at the same time, I recently just launched um, something on it's it's taking the concept of a sliding scale, but actually making it super concrete. Um, I have this program called the Pocket Coach, and it's designed for people who are either scared of investing in a coach or they don't know what coaching is and they just want to get their toes in the water. And it's just a very inexpensive $35 a month subscription where if you want coaching, it's available, but it won't be as intense or as, um, yeah, I guess intense um, as a normal coaching relationship is. So it's more of, hey, I'm thinking about making some changes in my life and I don't really know what a coach is, but I'd like to give it a shot. So for me, this is, this is a way not for me to undervalue my time, but is a way for me to introduce people into a personal journey um, of personal development for people. There's a lot of people out there who personal development is like, woo, or, or, you know, like woo woo science to people. So this is kind of for me and the people that I want to reach, I have purposefully done that um, to put that out there. Well, that's, that's good because it's not going to be personally uh, involved to that person because it's more of a generic uh, program of getting started. And then they, once they start seeing the value from the generic side, then they say, okay, and I want a little bit more one-on-one or at least group mm-hmm. coaching uh, with exactly. you, depending on what their price, what they can afford. Exactly, exactly. Mm-hmm. So it's more developing them along the way as well. 
Well, another thing is we're, we're running a little long right now, but uh, one of the things I also like to ask of uh, entrepreneurs is we learn more from our challenges and our failures than we often do from our successes. Could you be willing to share some of your, either your early failures or your early challenges that you had with your coaching business, or maybe ones that are a little bit more recent? Sure. Um, let's see. Let's see. Um, for me, something that has been a big challenge for me is consistently is, is showing up consistently on a public in a, in a public way, I should say. And that I say that because um, throughout my life, I have struggled with um, things like depression and um, my own inner critic and my inner gremlins and whatnot. Um, I tend to feel very deeply when I feel um, emotions. Um, and sometimes that can get the better of me. And when I have when I'm on fire and I'm having like a, a typical day that I have things planned out and I have things working and kind of, and, and milling away. Um, but when you have those low days, sometimes it is real tough to show up online. It is real tough to send that email. It's real tough to, to get out there and record that YouTube video. And um, there have been times where I've maybe missed a couple of my, uh, goals that I've set for myself in terms of um, I was supposed to record this, I was supposed to release this blog and do all of these things and hit these marks. And because either I'm feeling, I'm my inner critic is telling me that I'm not as valuable as I think I am on those normal days, um, then, or if I'm, if, or if the depression kind of hits in a little bit and, and kind of gets in the way and, and shakes things up, then I'm not delivering the free content. I'm not delivering the message that I was so excited to deliver just a day ago. Um, and so that has been, it's tricky when it is, when you are a solopreneur, um, hmm. when you have a team, you know, you have a marketing team, they can run it. How, it doesn't matter how you feel. <laughs> right. um, when you have, you know, your financial team and all of these other supporting people and groups, um, they can help you get that stuff out the door. But when it's just you, um, it becomes it becomes hard to to stay on task all the time, um, and especially there's so many entrepreneurs out there who have kids, who have families, who have uh, maybe two other jobs um, that it is you know it's tricky to to stay in the rhythm. And I would say that was a challenge early on, and to be honest, that's a challenge that comes up nowadays too. And I'm glad that you're becoming so vulnerable there. And I want to say thank you for for going down that route there. And one of the things that that I'm recently just currently going through, because I'm just like yourself. I mean, I have those days as well where I've got this whole network, this whole funnel I've got to build. I've got all this going yeah. on. <laughs> then I wake up in the mornings like, oh, I just don't feel like doing this. Yeah. And, it's, <laughs> and it, can be, uh, it can be challenging because when you're a solopreneur, you're, you are often your own motivation. Yes. Yeah. And Absolutely. when that motive, when your downside comes in, it's hard to self-motivate yourself, or at least I, I know it is for me. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I actually am doing right now is, you because know, one of the things I suggest everybody have, and I don't know if you have one yourself, is you have a we have a an accountability partner. And now there's one thing about having a coach, but there's another thing about having an accountability partner. And what I've actually just did as of yesterday. Uh, at the time of the recording of the show, that is, uh, just yesterday, I because I was on my regular weekly call with my accountability partner, and now we're not going to do weekly anymore. We're going to say we're going to still do weekly, but we're going to say, okay, let's schedule Friday, let's schedule Saturday, let's let's do some run throughs together. Let's, and sometimes that to me is a is a way to kind of get out of the funk because mm. you have that other person there, kind of like your gym buddy. You have that person like, you yeah. know, I don't feel like going to the gym today. Well, you got to go anyway. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. And then when your gym buddy is going through their own funk, you know, it's the exact same kind of thing can happen. Yeah. So, yeah. Absolutely. Um, you can show up for them and get them out the funk. 
Yes, yes. So yeah. That is because because me and, and my accountability buddy, her and I have been doing this for over two years now, and yeah. and there's certain things that certain levels that we have not, not uh, that neither one of us has hit you know, as far as our goals are concerned. Mm-hmm. It's because that we've been kind of complacent in in many areas. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. like okay, well, we were supposed to be accountability partners. Now we're friends, but we still we still have to have that. Yeah. <laughs> that, that you know the original reason for us to you know getting together anyway yeah. so for those of you out there if you're just getting started and you're hitting those funks find somebody else in a similar business mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and say okay how can we partner up uh, uh, with each other um there was a class that i went to a few i would guess over a little over a year ago it was, with, it was with robert kiyosaki from the rich dad poor dad fame oh yeah and, yeah and then one of his rich dad coaches which is a guy by the name of blair singer and what they did, and this was uh, when they were sharing this, I was like, this is such a great idea. And one of the things they did was that they deliberately got together uh, uh, almost on a daily basis. And then you know, one of the things that they did was, okay, what are the people's um, objections for hiring you for your business? And they, would, and they would pitch back each other for hours and hours on those, you know, on those things. Like, this is how you overcome that objection. This is how you mm. do that. Until it became so wow. second nature to them that somebody comes and says, I don't need a coach. Well, then they would go into, like, do you have what you have? Do you have what you want in your life in this particular area? Well, no. Okay, so what's holding you back? So mm-hmm. you, having that accountability buddy or having that sounding board to help build your business so that you can, you know, well, you, you, you're not in those funky days as much. Does that yeah, make any sense? I love that. I love that idea. Yeah, because I do have a coach, um, but I don't have a separate accountability partner. And um, for me also, I've, I've come to this, uh, this place this year, actually, understanding and accepting the fact that I am way more extroverted than I ever thought I, that I was. Mm-hmm. And so my refuel is being around other people. If I'm just by myself, I like my quiet time and I like that creative time that I have with myself. But if I'm there too long, that's when the shell starts to creep in. And that's when, you know, those, I miss those markers and I miss those, you know, deliverables. Um, But using that idea of, hey, I actually, one, get re-energized by being around people. And two, if they were, if I know I have to be accountable to them, that can absolutely um, pep me up, I guess, and, and get me, you know, fingers on the keyboard, face in front of the camera. That'll, that'll get me to show up for sure. And then something else that um, this kind of brings to mind is one of the things that I do is a why workshop and how there's so many different avenues to get to a really powerful why. And you and I have talked about this, having, having a, a strong motivator. Um, strong enough that it doesn't just look good on paper, but it actually moves you out of that space of, of I just, I can't show up today. I just, or I just don't feel like it. It pushes past the don't, the don't feel like it days. Mm-hmm. Um, and when we have something that's deep enough that if we don't show up, this is what's truly at stake, then that'll get us kind of, that'll get us that energy. Maybe just to even take the first step. Maybe it's even just getting out of bed. Maybe it's, you know, mm-hmm. one little tiny step just to get the momentum going. Well, fantastic. Well, we're actually going to be wrapping up here in just a few moments. Uh, before we do so, are there any lessons or tidbits of information that you've learned for either being a coach or being an entrepreneur that you would like to offer up to the, the listeners or the viewers on this, on this show? Um, yes. One thing that I think is really important is to not focus on the end result. It can be very easy to say, okay, this is what I want it to be like. This is what I want my business to look like and and really get attached to the end result. Especially if you're a coach, the end result that you're hoping for, for your clients, because that's not what it's about. Um, whatever results your clients get are because of your clients. And that they, that is their journey and that you are not there to, you know, get them a new job. You're not there to get them a new spouse. Maybe you're not there to, to provide all of these massive life changes for them. You're there to be their mirror. You're there to be their kind of guide into their soul so that they can make decisions that suit them best according to their standards. Um, when it comes back to the business though, I got, sorry, I went on, on a tangent there. Um, when we get too, too attached to the shape of our business, then the emotion I think is lost. 
the emotion is what drives us. And the emotion comes from why we're doing what we're doing in the first place. You can build any business under the sun. There's a reason you've chosen this business and you've got to take a look at the impact that you're going for. Whose lives are you touching? What changes are they walking away with as a result of working with you? That's the steam and delivering those results or having tools and resources to, to get those clients, those results, that's going to shape your business. Not the other way around. A lot of times we, we try to work from the outside in. I encourage business owners, especially new business owners to work from the inside out. What are you hoping to accomplish emotionally for yourself? What are you hoping to accomplish for the world? And let that be your guide into how the structure of your business takes shape. Okay. And I'm glad you said that by not, by not being so focused on the end result because, and you were a complete testament of this as well as you changed your business strategy. You changed what you wanted to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> and, completely. And I know I will again. <laughs> you know, you will again. And the fact that you've actually had clients that did the same thing. Yeah. So people, yeah. people said, this is my passion. This is my passion. Like, well, not really. It's my passion. Then well, let's discover your passion. Like, okay, you're, you're going in a completely different direction here. Yeah. So yeah. if I was always focused on, on this end point there, my end point is going to be over here. It's like, then I'm mm-hmm. wasting a lot of time by doing that. So thank you mm-hmm. for sharing that with us. Oh, absolutely. And so Robin, um, I always like to end the show as, uh, as to how people can get a hold of you. They want to do your your pocket coach you know for 30 was it for 35 dollars a month or if you want them to you know possibly consult with you or anything like that what is the best way that they can get a hold of you is it through like say your your personal website your excuse me your business website or your business facebook or page or anything like that um, what would you like to share as a way for people to get a hold of you Let's see. I think um, for people to take a look at my website, first and foremost, to kind of get an additional idea of who I am and what I do, that's uh, Robin with a Y, R-O-B-Y-N dot coach, not dot com. Um, And just kind of take a look at what I offer and see what kind of resonates with you. I feel like it has a good kind of snapshot of of me and my personality. And then um, if you want to reach out to me directly, I'm very available through email. It's simply Robin at Robin.coach. And again, it's Robin with a Y. And um, I would love to hear from you. I love, you know, learning from people from all walks of life and um, how we can mutually support one another in this crazy world that we live in. And um, yeah, so email and my website are probably the best ways. Okay, so again, that's going to be at Robin, R-O-B-Y-N, dot coach, C-O-A-C-H. Mm-hmm. And or you can, she also gave out her email address, which is Robin, R-O-B-Y-N, at, again, the same website, R-O-B-Y-N, dot coach. Mm-hmm. And uh, she does offer a consultation or in discovery sessions. And she also has different kinds of coaching uh, platforms. As you already mentioned that she does private coaches. She does do uh, group coaching. She does do webinars. I know you do Facebook lives from time to time because I've I seen do. a few of your episodes as well. Mm-hmm. So if you want to try to follow her, just go in and reach out to her. Mm-hmm. And uh, also, if you want to hear any of the other shows that we have, you can always find them at my website at kevinadunlap.com. It's under the media tab. You can not only see the video interviews because this is being recorded both as an audio and as a video so this is for the audio podcast which goes out on podbean and itunes but it's also going to have its own private uh, video channel so you can actually see what she looks like in, 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 and so you can see her energy and the passion that she has uh, in this so mm-hmm. again we have uh, robin Ecker, eckersley sorry i'm going to get that right one of the names <laughs> and she's an impact coach here in las vegas nevada uh, any last words before we say goodbye to everybody um, just that I'm, I'm so grateful for you and for this opportunity. And I think that, um, something important for people to hear maybe is just that they literally can create whatever life they want to. It might seem super far away. It might seem super unattainable, but you can truly create any kind of existence you want in this life. And it's people like Kevin and myself that help you get there. Well, thank you. Well, thank you for saying that. And also thank you for being on the show. It was a great pleasure having you on this show. And um, and I look forward to talking to you offline here. And also everybody that's listening or watching this show, please reach out to Robin. She's 
100% genuine and should definitely is here to help you grow your business, especially if you're a woman. So that's what I know that's what your passion is. So everybody congratulate uh, Robin here. You can leave a, a comment below on the, in, in the description. If you want to say something about the show, what you'd like or dis, dislike about the show and Robin, thank you for being here. And it was a great pleasure having you on the show today. Oh, it was, it was a great time. Thanks so much, Kevin. Keep doing what you're doing. This is amazing. It helps people for sure, for sure. Well, my <laughs> pleasure. Thank you very much. And uh, goodbye, everybody. <laughs> Thanks so much for listening to this episode of Life's Little Lessons with your host, author of Designing Your Own Destiny, Kevin A. Dunlap. For more great content and to stay up to date, visit kevinadunlap.com, facebook.com slash kevinadunlap.author, and on Twitter at Kevin A. Dunlap. We'll catch you on the next episode of Life's Little Lessons.